Hey guys, just wanted to give a big shout out to Stark Industries Discord server, a Marvel Future Fight related server that answers all of your Marvel Future Fight related questions. Very family friendly. And on top of that, you don't want to miss this opportunity because I'm giving away a crystal coupon code. And all you have to do is leave a comment on my video and it could be any comment you want and the most liked comment will win this crystal coupon and all you would have to do is join stark industries and the moderator she will help you collect this coupon and the invite link will be in the description below please enjoy the rest of this video today is a big day today i'm going to go over a pvp guide for all players this guide is going to be about all of the general rules of each of the three primary PvP modes. I'm going to describe in detail the best characters to use in those modes and the best equipped gear and CTPs for those characters. Um, I'm going to go over basically what you guys could do to get ahead in whatever league you're in. So what is pvp anyway so pvp in this game is player versus player you get to play with your build characters against other people's built characters instead of fighting something like a boss or something you going into an arena and fighting against some of the toughest teams in the game really like even the, the the lowest league could have some of the hardest teams to face and i'm basically going to be going over with you like how to get ahead in these modes so for example timeline battle you get to pick a team of three and you get to compete in what whichever league you're placed in so for example if you're just starting out you're probably going to end up in this league here so there are general rules that you want to go by which i'll discuss further in detail um there's also going to be restricted characters each week so i'm going to go over that in detail later so then there's other world battle which is slightly different from timeline battle because timeline battle also features a manual play option but these pvp modes are automatic you could play automatic and watch your team fight others you don't have to fight manually here you get to pick a team of five and you get to decide which characters are best suited for you and you also get to apply extra buffs to to, to this team too so you could get ahead in the competition so as you can see right now i'm in challenger which is the highest league you can go in for this particular mode and it's relatively easy it's not really too difficult to get into a league such as vibranium if you have a few pvp designated characters equipped you could still get into the top leagues i'll teach you how later on so timeline battle i would consider it a kind of like a like a c tier game mode and the reason why is because it's probably the most difficult game mode in the game and you don't have to play a lot of it to get the rewards so the rewards show here so if you're in bronze for example and you get let's say an average of 50 percent like 30 to 50 percent you're going to get 20 crystals now in order to get in this category you would probably only need to win maybe one time for the week to get free crystals now if you want to get into the top 100 is a different story you're going to probably have to spend crystals but for example the higher leagues you go, the more crystals you get. So here, 
I'm always edging top 100 and this is the crystal reward that I get for reaching top 100. On top of that, if I win top 100, I get a trophy indicator. So it could showcase your credibility in PVP if you are a PVP centered player, right? And you do generally want to play this to get the crystals, but you don't have to play it a lot. So depending on how you want to play it, I would consider this game mode a C tier game mode. Now let's go into other world battle. I think other world battle is an A tier game mode because the resources that you get are easy. The crystals that you get at the end of the season are pretty substantial you get these free runes and these free swords here so it could help you with stat accumulation which i'm going to uh, describe to you later and on top of that you can kind of get a, a general idea of of who you should build so I would consider this an, an A tier game mode. I think anybody could pick it up, anybody could play it, and anybody could get these really good rewards because the rewards are generally good. Now, um, Alliance Conquest, I would say, is somewhere in the middle. It's kind of like a B tier game mode. It depends on how your Alliance wants to play. I think a, a lot of alliances are, are, are centered more towards alliance battle. So if your alliance is centered more towards alliance conquest, there's a lot of different rules that you have to follow that don't apply to other world battle or timeline battle. So for example, uh, the application period usually occurs at the end of each conquest week and you get to select which times are convenient for you and there's three different times you can pick depending on what your alliance leader decides to do so here you get to pick a select of three teams just like in timeline battle but you get to use the entirety of your roster and you get to to go and take over enemy regions so it's a bit of a different edge to pvp and the rewards are okay they're they're not they're not too amazing like you're not going to get crystals like in other world battle or in timeline battle but you get the reward of interacting more with your alliance members and coordinating different tactics and timing your battles so you get to have a general idea of what you want to have your alliance members do in the heat of the moment and it could be very very fun for some of you so i would consider this a b tier game mode so now you want to focus more on the elements of pvp and what you need to look out for so pvp is very character based so there are going to be certain characters that are specifically built for pvp and there are very strict rules in pvp that you should follow in order to get a sufficient amount of wins to maybe even compete or get the the perfect amount of crystals that you want so if you notice with these teams there's a similarity each team is equipped with a leader that has debuff removal that's step number one and rule number one M majority of your teams because of the way that pvp is structured now 99 percent of the time you need to have debuff removal for 12 seconds like it states here apply to all of your allies now it could be super villain allies it could be superhero allies or it could be all allies so 
for example, Timeline Battle has a feature where you could select a dealer. So depending on how you want to, you, your style to play, you get to pick who goes first. So the issue with this is that in only Timeline Battle, you get a cooldown penalty. So you want to be aware and conscientious of who you want to pick. So I'll go over the strategies of Timeline Battle later, but the main focus is who you want to pick and why. So for example, you want to pick characters that have the following statistics within their skills. For example, Strife. His third skill has many, many statistics that you need for PvP characters to work efficiently. Strife has many of those abilities in one skill. So, counter attacks or ignore targeting. It's usually applicable in one of the five skills that you could use and it allows you to go through an iframe, an invincibility frame. So invincibility frames look like this, for example. There's an X in the middle of the screen, and in this particular situation, the enemy can't attack you unless he does a specific skill that ignores targeting. So you can do something like this, and it's an ignore targeting skill that also counterattacks, and it's an iframe. So, these are the type of skills that get you through PvP and usually end up one-shotting very, very tough opponents. On top of that, they have other skills that are essential, like recovery of HP, healing, that's another essential, damage immunity, that's another essential stat. Stats like ignore dodge. Ignore dodge is very beneficial in attacking your characters efficiently. It could come in the form of within a skill or it could come in a passive. So for example, oh here, to all allies it gives all resistances by 30 and ignores target's dodge rate. That's another essential stat to have. You want to have that stat, right? On top of that, you want to have stats like penetration. For example, Ghost Rider, he has penetration in his fourth skill, and it's 100%. And it's penetrating super armor, barrier, all damage immune, and invincible. Invincible is a key stat that you do want to penetrate because many characters, like I said, they naturally have invincibility in their kit, right? Other stats you want to look for are characters that have a revive. It could look like this. When HP is below 5, uh, HP does not drop to 1 or below and recovers 20% after the effect ends. And the effect lasts five seconds. So I call this personally a mini revive. So during this time, your health could be at 1%, but for five seconds, you could play normally without dying. So these are essential if you want to have the edge over other characters with a revive. So, for example, Jean Grey has a full revive. You want to have characters that are able to kill the opponent twice. That's how characters are generally valued in the PvP scale. It's based on how many stats you have and how much power you have. Now, you can get this power in your statistics from... A number of things you could go on this new team up collection and you can get something like you know two percent extra attack for all of these characters and then you can get more uh, applied effects that you can get like ignore targets dodge rate this could be beneficial in all game modes it's minuscule the stats don't get me wrong 
but any stat helps people that play pvp have the highest stats in the game and that's why they play it in the first place so you can get stats from agent level another area where stats are minuscule but if you want to have a slight edge in your attack or hp you could pick those options in this agent level uh bonus bracket another way you can get statistics primary way you get statistics is from cards cards give you the following effects they could give you three percent ignore dodge which comes with a set for example there's sets and card collections you can get here you can get pierce pierce is a very important stat for pve but it heavily increases your damage the more damage you have in pvp the better always that's my philosophy so a good amount of pierce to have when you're starting pvp you could start at like maybe eight to ten percent pierce and you could go in the lower leagues but if you want to compete in vibranium and challenger leagues you want to get at least 90 percent pierce or 22 to 25 percent pierce preferably then your cards allow you to increase things like crit rate, crit damage, all attack. These stats are important. They may not be as important as Pierce, but when they're stacked with Pierce, the effects could be very, very good. Same thing with Concentration. Now, Concentration, you can get from another type of item, which I'll showcase to you. You can also get it in cards, but it's more important to get pierced in concentration in, in, in cards and things like that. So it also increases your max HP. That's another PVP centered stat that's very good. I've seen builds that go up to 100% HP. So you want to make sure you pick all the right cards and craft them accordingly. So... On top of that, I have maxed ignore defense, or almost max ignore defense, and I have good cooldown duration. These stats are also very important for PvP. Cooldown duration, it could decrease the time of your skill cooldown timer by half, so you'll be able to use your skills faster. Um, you can even use stats like movement speed, because on manual play in timeline battle, you could have an analog stick and maybe even run away from certain skills. Um, on top of that, you could use stats from swords. Swords you get from Otherworld battle, and the more patterned colors you have, the better stats you get. For this bracket here, and this bracket so the more colored uh colored indicators you have the higher stats you'll get on top of that you get other effects within these swords like all attack additional pierce damage received then you get things like instinct attack and concentration you can get extra concentration from swords, which is an extremely valuable stat for increasing the effects of CTPs, which I'm going to talk about next. You get other stats like even fire damage and other uh, niche little uh, attack increases to certain types like inhumans or uh, characters with flame or evil abilities, right? You can get these effects through the artifact as well. They give the passive and they give the instinct attack increase, whether it's order or justice or uh, any of the other following, destruction, cruelty, etc. On top of that, you can get stats from ISO sets. You want to have eight slot ISO sets that have all attack so you want to go most of the time you want to go for sets like power of hangry oak and overdrive these stats are going to give you the max amount of attack so you want this 
you also want to increase things like your typing because your type, dependent on who it has better damage over, it increases the damage more of it by a certain percentage and it also decreases the damage received from those types as well your character development from tier 3 to tier 4 is also very substantial there are many characters that could work at just tier 3 level 80 there are characters that desperately need a tier 4 Sometimes you can't use any tier 3s at all. You only have to use tier 4s. Especially for game modes like Otherworld Battle. You could also increase your skills with tier 4 materials. You can also increase your gear with tier 4 materials. And you can also equip Uru as well. And get Odin's Blessings and put them on. So, also as well as, uh, don't forget to get your uniform to mythic that's another helpful stat that can also get some bonus stats all of these stats combined is what's going to give you the edge against opponents the more of these accumulated stats that you have the better chance you have of your characters being efficient now ctps ctps are probably the most important piece of equipment to give your character it's probably going to be the final piece of equipment you want to give your character you want to equip it based on your play style if you want to play a pvp character that's more geared towards pve but has pvp stats a prime example is ghost rider you may want to go for an attack CTP like Greed or Judgment. On top of that, you may want to reforge these CTPs because reforging these CTPs gives extra stats. So for Judgment, it gives type amplification. For Greed, it gives the ambush effect, increasing um, your attack and your defense. And it combines with the amount of concentration you have. So, like I said before, your concentration greatly affects the stats of this CTP as well. Based on your own testing and your own playstyle, you're going to figure out which CTPs are best for your characters. There are some that are really meant for defensive CTPs. And then there are some that are actually more suited for offensive CTPs. So I'm going to give you now a detailed list of the top 10 characters for PvP with the exception of a couple of honorable mentions. And I'm going to give you the top 3 best CTPs to equip for these characters. All right, so let's get right into it. I'm going to be starting the countdown from 1 to 10 because we all know who sits in number one spot as the king of Toxic, and his name is Adam Warlock. He is an absolute number one for PvP and for many reasons. Number one, it's his second skill in general. It has everything that you need. It's got counterattacks. It has ignore targeting. It removes the active buff from the target and it incapacitates. It does both, but most just have incapacitation. Warlock is the only character that can remove all of your buffs no matter what, even if you're under debuff removal. So it becomes extremely lethal. On top of that, it gives a heal, it increases the defenses, and it removes all debuffs. So it acts as a self-leadership, uh, if you would say. It acts as debuff removal automatically. On top of that, it gives, and it doesn't specify here, 
but it probably indicates because of removes all debuffs automatically, he also gains super guard break immunity from this skill. He won't get stunned by Jean Grey second if you use it, and you you can combine it with a skill that only has damage immunity. You don't have to use invincibility if you don't want to, and you could save this fourth skill, for example, and you can just combine two and three with just damage immunity to kill the target. So, with that kind of power combined with a native revive and a native heal on his artifact, he basically becomes unstoppable and he can kill all the meta in one life. He should keep top spot for a while. Let's go over what CTPs he's best with. Number one choice is clearly a CTP of Conquest that's brilliantly reforged. This gives him an extra layer of durability. So on top of having a revive, he basically takes one damage over time against any type of attack. So in order to remove this, you need to constantly be attacking him and you need to have the defense to also tank his skills. The only downside to having a Brilliant Conquest CTP on Warlock is that it's most likely you'd have to have it brilliant and you'd have to have really high stats on your cards to get the benefit of Conquest in all content. Now, it's the best for autoplay as well, and it's really great for Otherworld Battle and AC because it gives him the durability he needs, even despite being a debuffed character too. And he doesn't necessarily need the attack, but it greatly helps him overall. However, if you guys have a tier 3 level 80, for example, you could also go with a CTP of Greed. The CTP of Greed is the second best choice for him in PvP because it gives him extra super guard break immunity when the ambush effect comes up and it gives him 150% attack increase to all types and it gives an extra layer of defense as well as well which Ambush does specify. If you want more of a hybrid, then you could easily go for a Mighty Energy. And I have him rocking with a Mighty Energy, and one of the reasons why is because in one of his passives, he has native guard break immunity. I believe it's in his uniform passive, yeah. So he gets now native guard break immunity. So he technically doesn't need a greed for extra guard break immunity. An energy and a greed become very, very similar. And the difference between an energy and a greed is that a greed's proc activates immediately, whereas an energy proc doesn't activate immediately. So you have a better chance to time your proc with an energy in all forms of content rather than greed which doesn't really make warlock hybrid so warlock is so good that you can probably get away with having him tier 3 level 80 like i do with an energy and him still being able to beat all vibranium and challenger teams basically by himself so he is definitely a mainstay number one for a long time to come now we're moving on to number two wolverine and the reason why is because number three has a lot of counters, whereas Wolverine has very few counters. His only counters are characters like Warlock, who's a blast and has a revive and removes buffs and has super guard break on his skills. Or super defensive characters like Thanos with authority. Those are his only real counters and maybe like a carnage refinement could be a counter to him but everybody else he slaughters 
He has a fifth skill that is completely unavoidable and ignores targeting. So you either have to tank it or you have to use a decoy. It gives him critical PvP stats like ignore targets dodge, penetration, it, uh, increases all basic attacks, um, damage procs, like increases basic damage by 40% for 7 seconds for one attack. So it is basically uh, a perfect skill. On top of that, his his only of av really avoidable skills are his first three. His third, however, is hard to avoid. His fourth is very strong and very much unavoidable as well. The only downside of this skill is that it has low hits. And his fifth skill is completely unavoidable. And on top of that, he has a skill... His second skill that you could use to sometimes manually avoid opponents and kill them with the residual damage of your other skills. This skill can only be used in manual play, but it's a great skill that holds potential for other future skills because I believe that future skills should be utilized in this way. With his revive he gains complete dominance and he's completely relentless he's clearly number two and he's way better than gene in content like otherworld battle as well because when gene gray is debuffed in otherworld battle and he is debuffed in otherworld battle if you were to pick a choice between the two of them and you had wolverine's artifact Wolverine can still kill characters even while debuffed. His best CTP because of this is probably Conquest. It's arguably Conquest if you want to do primarily PvP content in all content. But a very, very close second is what I have on him now, which is Mighty Greed. But... With Conquest, it gives him the edge against most characters in the beginning of a match like AC or Otherworld Battle. Because Wolverine's fifth skill is extremely strong and it interrupts any other skill that's being used as well. Because 90% of the time, these characters don't have super guard break immunity up and running until later right so a brilliant full conquest on him when he's fully built tier 4 is probably the best ctb on him however most people are going to rock a greed on him because greed gives him the edge offensively against most builds even at tier 3 you could utilize him very efficiently with a mighty greed or a regular greed even, which is much easier to acquire than of a luxurious, brilliant conquest, which also has its downsides. A greed Wolverine could very much kill a, a conquest Wolverine. And over time, he can kill a conquest Warlock as well, but a conquest Wolverine can't kill a conquest Warlock. Over time, he gets uh, the edge against uh, Conquest Warlocks, probably because of the amount of hits that he deals. AI doesn't have debuff removal during their second revive. His third best option is Authority. His third best choice is Authority. When he's tier 4 and he's maxed out, the Authority on Steel really gives him the edge to eventually solo your team. He may not have the damage right away, but the damage eventually comes back. And he also gets it like uh, essentially um, another revive, you know, taking like one damage for seven seconds. 
and and he gets to recharge and he has a very low cooldown on his skills which is another reason that makes him in, in incredibly meta he could basically recharge and have all of the, his pvp stats running every eight seconds all of these ctps that i mentioned greatly benefit wolverine especially because of the extra super guard break immunity for for Otherworld Battle, AC, and Timeline Battle, Conquest gets the best value. Greed is a very close second in all content. And you can choose an, a brilliant authority as a third choice option if you only want to rock him in Timeline Battle. Because I think it's primarily useful in Timeline Battle. And maybe Otherworld Battle as well. So, I mentioned her name already. Number three definitely has to be Jean Grey. With her insane amount of DPS, her revive, her resistance to fire, and her ignore iframes on her second skill, her fifth skill with penetration, that can be activated every seven seconds. She easily gets top three, and she has a lot of secrets to her game that I explained in another video. Her skills actually are quite evasive. She isn't evasive herself as a character, but her fifth skill could avoid her being killed against Warlock's second skill, for example, which is a cheat almost. And it makes her extremely valuable and almost able to just rock a team by herself with a secondary meta and, and be and, and a reflector and be okay so she basically has everything going for her on top of that you could put many ctps on her and she will still have value in all content whereas adam warlock and wolverine they don't have the same value in the other side of the game in PvE content as Jean Grey does. Jean Grey has a ton of versatility. So, in addition, Jean also has native guard break immunity and she has many iframed cancelable skills. One being a partial cancelable skill, two also being partially cancelable. 3 and 4 being cancelable iframes that you can land on, and 5 also being cancelable. The number one CTP I would put on her is actually Greed. Greed gives her everything that she needs to succeed, to survive, and to kill you very fast. The ambush stat gives her the edge defensively, it gives her a very surprising amount of, ta of attack offensively. And she essentially also negates reflect if you attack her too much. That's another uh, benefit of having um, conquest or greed CTP. That was basically one of Jean Grey's primary counters. And greed and conquest negates those counters. However... Jean is a very versatile character, so Brilliant Conquest isn't really the best CTP to put on her. I think Brilliant Conquest is generally a luxury CTP, and you should only put it on a tune that will absolutely work with it 100%. So, Greed is definitely number one. Number two, I would have to say, is actually Refinement. Refinement CTP gives her a very surprising amount of heal she has the ability to tank and do very very well with supports with a fully built tier 4 and very good card stats in addition she has super guard break immunity under the buff that ref that brilliant refinement gives so it makes her very, very well-rounded, so long as you have the attack to back it up. A third choice option, I would actually say, would be Judgment. Judgment has hybrid value in PvP, and 
I am rocking a tier three Jean Grey and with a mighty judgment, she actually has the power of a tier four and can still be utilized very appropriately in all content. I wouldn't recommend authority because her damage gets taken away. I wouldn't recommend regen because she doesn't have the defense for it. And I wouldn't recommend conquest because she also doesn't carry enough defense and heal at the same time for Conquest to be effective. So I would go for an all-out attack build with Judgment because the type amplification helps. The uh, decrease all resistances after debuff removal is gone from, in, from the AI, that helps. And element damage is also significant always in this situation so and now we're going to move on to number four which i think is a clear winner here it's spider-man now how could a character with no revive survive in today's meta well it's all because of his fourth skill his fourth skill ignores targeting it, and also, Spider-Man is, again, one of the very few characters that could remove buffs from the target without incapacitation. So, that is extremely effective. Even when he's a debuff character, he could still tank and kill the opponent. He recovers HP, he penetrates, and he also removes all debuffs. So, and he gets accumulation. So, his fourth skill is essentially so strong that it's able to kill a refinement carnage with a regular CTP, mind you. So, it is probably because of the uh, removing of the active buffs and him getting accumulation based on damage. And he's also very relentless. His fifth skill gives a ton of damage and a damage proc and invincibility. And on top of that, his third skill combined with all of that gives extra attack as well. So with up to four iframe skills and a native invisibility buff, Spider-Man becomes an extremely hard target to hit. Despite him not being great in the other side of the game, he is very, very PvP-oriented, structured. He has increased damage to supervillains. Skill cooldown is, is, is very, very low. So he could spam his skills in a rotation every six seconds. And he gets his Tier 4 Striker very, very early. And it's very, very efficient. It's, it's efficient because Spider-Man is under an iframe and ignore iframe. And if you use it at the same time, this, this tier 4 striker will also be under an iframe and an ignore iframe. The same with the, uh, with the other top three that's above him. So what are the best CTPs for him? Number one, I would definitely put greed on him. Greed is wonderful it gives him the attack that he needs to kill basically everybody and he is my primary counter against the number one pvp character in the game which is conquest warlocks he is my go-to he survives against conquest warlocks he kills them twice and he's evasive enough as well so because of his natural evasion with his, his, his invisibility and his healing, he has a native heal and he has a heal on his fourth skill. He's able to rock something like a greed despite him being so fragile, but he is a glass cannon and he can also have some value in, in PVE with a greed rather than a, a defensive CTP. Number two choice, I would say it's authority because authority gives him a tactical advantage against Jean Greys in the beginning of the match. Jean Greys are often in the beginning of the match and they're very, very 
uh, complicated to fight, especially when Jean Grey has greed. So Spider-Man being able to tank that skill and then use his fourth skill and then fifth skill and fourth skill again to kill Jean Grey twice is very, very valuable. On top of that, he can still kill most Warlocks, which is his primary purpose in PvP now. So it really depends on playstyle. That's why there are some people that actually go with this third choice option, which I would say Spider-Man is one of the only few characters that could greatly benefit from a brilliant regen. Now, brilliant regen gives him an extra heal. And if your Spider-Man is jacked up in stats with good cards, you could rock a brilliant regen on him. It could interrupt the opponent's skills. And since Spider-Man's skill cooldown is so low, he can be constantly in ignore iframe iframes. And the regen would be perfect for him. Because regen has this habit of removing the skill for about one and a half to two seconds. And then bringing the skill's residual damage back if you're not... If you haven't killed the opponent or you're not under an ignore iframe iframe. So it's because of that, you know, regen is a very risky CTP to put on. But it could it could work in Spider-Man. That moves us on to number five, Thanos. Now, Thanos, he has to be at tier four. And he arguably needs a defensive support. One. But if he has these things, he becomes very valuable and very reliable. He has an ignore iframe iframe on his fourth skill. It ignores targeting. It penetrates. And it has invincibility. And it increases all of his defenses. So he becomes very, very valuable because he has a lot of defense and decreased damage received because he has decreased damage received he needs to be really jacked up with stats very very aggressively not many characters have as much defense as he does he decreases basic damage received and he has very, very solid attack. His fourth and his fifth skill really have enough damage to bypass even Conquest defense. So Thanos has gained value since the Conquest CTP has arrived and he has become a primary counter against Conquest Warlocks. Now, the best CTP to put on him is definitely authority, brilliant authority. With a defensive support, he has enough decreased damage received and heal to take the damage and then have the steel ready to go by the time his next rotation occurs. So he becomes very efficient and the brilliant authority of steel almost acts as a revive. And because he has brilliant authority steel, and because he has so much decreased damage received, he's going to take two damage from almost every single skill, no matter what. So, he becomes very valuable against Wolverine as well. And he's also very valuable against Jean Grey, even in the beginning, only with this CTP. Because invincibility gives him evasion that he needs to run away from deadly skills. There, there aren't any CTPs that could do that on manual play. Now, playing him in Other World Battle and Alliance Conquest are much different, of course, but in Timeline Battle, Brilliant Authority is definitely the best CTP to put on him. The second best CTP to put on him would be uh, Brilliant Conquest. Not Mighty Conquest. It has to be Brilliant Conquest because Conquest from Mighty to Brilliant, it has levels. You want the most defenses that you, that you can possibly get in order to put a Brilliant Conquest, a luxury CTP that's hard to get, on a character like Thanos 
who benefits better from a mighty authority rather than a mighty conquest. So if you're going to put a conquest on him, make it brilliant, give him a defensive support, and he should be very, very solid in all content still. The Brilliant Conquest effect negates Reflect, which is one of his primary counters. So characters like Destroyer, characters like Ancient One, and Emma Frost, they get their Reflect negated. And, and, and Thanos becomes very, very hard to kill when they're fighting him. So that's why I would arguably make it a second choice. Third choice, I would probably say it's Regen. I would say it's a regen because it's PvP oriented and because if you were to take Thanos with two defensive supports and put him in something like Otherworld Battle or AC, he could be greatly affected by regen's cancellation of the skill. So it's a, an okay third option. These are the top three for that character. Moving on to number six, we've got Ghost Rider. Now, Ghost Rider is an interesting one, and I bet you're wondering why Thanos is above him in this list. Well, it's because he is a PvE-centered character in terms of how his skills are utilized, but he has PvP-centered stats. His fifth skill is a cancelable iframe that gives residual damage, but it also gives invincibility. His fourth skill is a PvP-centered skill with ignore targeting, decreased defenses, 100% to penetrate invincibility, and it gives additional invincibility on top of that. So he has two skills that give invincibility. He has a damage proc to villains in this skill. And he has an iframe in this skill with an HP recovery. He is very capable in PvP with his revive on his artifact. Without the revive on his artifact, he, he's, his PvP use is very limited. He could maybe substitute some of the meta in, in Otherworld Battle, for example, that may be debuffed. But other than that, if you don't have his revive, it's better to build him for the other side of the game. But I do have plenty of suggestions for you if you guys decide to put him in PvP. So if you have him fully built tier 4 with very, very strong cards, you could probably put a greed on him. That would be the number one choice. Because you need the proc to activate right away. You need the proc to be sufficient in the damage. And on top of that, he does need guard break immunity. His number one choice would probably be greed on top of the getting the super guard break as well. And the ambush giving him the extra defense. He becomes suited more for otherworld battle when his skills are ready. The next CTP that I would suggest for him is actually a judgment because did he needs enough damage to be able to kill all of the primary meta in PvP and that includes the heroes. So like I was saying before, Ghost Rider's value actually is against Wolverine. He's a very solid counter against Wolverine. As even if Wolverine has the steel effect up. Ghost Rider still has enough offense to bypass that defense before the effect triggers. Judgment easily works as a fantastic hybrid for all content. So I would highly recommend this CTP for all content. And the third choice CTP I would use for him would probably be brilliant conquest now i don't think many people would equip a brilliant conquest ctp on him as brilliant conquest ctp is a luxury but it could work on him since ghost rider does have some decreased damage received 
and he has plenty of invincibility. And Conquest CTPs work very, very well when you have characters that have high decrease damage received and invincibility combined. So that would lead me on to talking about number seven on this list, which is actually a tier three character, and it's Strife. Strife actually plays a little bit similarly to Adam Warlock. He has a third skill that has massive damage. It almost acts as a one-shot skill. It does have incapacitation, but it doesn't remove buffs like Warlock's 2 does. So that's the only deficiency that it has compared to Warlock. Other than that, it's a counter ignore iframe. Strife has native penetration. I believe it's by like 70%. On top of this, his uniform passive gives when debuff to all allies to remove all debuffs. So he has a wasp-like effect in his uniform passive. And on top of that, he has very high decreased damage received. He has native penetration. He has immunity to incapacitation. So he really can't get can't get debuffed often. He has so much power for a tier three that it's actually insane. And the only reason why he's like a little lower on the list is actually because he doesn't have a revive. The potential he could have as a tier four is very high. And one of the best CTPs to equip for him is actually a CTP of Conquest. A CTP of Conquest gives him that extra durability that's needed to survive longer in Otherworld Battle. It gives him enough attack to just get by against killing a lot of the meta. So Wolverine and probably Jean Grey. Not so much against Adam Warlock this CTP is very good for, but it's good against all the other meta. And if you really want to utilize him in other world battle, this is the CTP to go for. The second best CTP I would equip for him is actually energy. And for me, the more damage you have on this character, the better. So... With energy's extra pierce, Strife is able to kill even Conquest Warlocks so long as you combine his skills. Because once again, his skills have invincibility and a damage proc, his fifth skill. And his fourth skill increases all attacks as well. And it has residual damage and it's cancelable. So you can combine these skills, 3, 4, and 5, very efficiently to kill almost all opponents. Strife is very, very efficient with a general PvE-centered CTP with extra pierce and ignore dodge. Very efficient, and I would highly recommend it for hybrid content. Third option would be Greed. I think Greed needs to be brilliant. I don't think you can get away with a Mighty because you need to have as much attack on him as possible. And you can get that much easier with a mighty CTP of energy rather than with a brilliant CTP of greed. Unless, of course, you have a brilliant CTP of greed to spare, then it's different. I would maybe recommend the uh, brilliant CTP of greed maybe slightly over a CTP of energy. But because he has debuff removal... And his third skill also gives super guard break immunity. And when triggered, it gives uh, all damage immunity as well. Therefore, could also still be utilized very efficiently with something like an energy CTP. So, I would choose energy over greed, which is a very close third choice. But that's the list for strife. Now, we're going on to number 8 in this list. Carnage. Now, Carnage is utilized very, very differently, and it's almost like you're making Carnage 
in a polar opposite of each other and I'll explain why so Carnage has a lot of very good abilities he has a very good fourth skill with penetration in all basic attacks and damage immunity so these are good PvP stats but clearly he's missing something the things that he's missing is in his third skill his ignore targeting the residual damage, the heal, all basic attacks by 15% accumulation based on damage that you inflict. These skills are meant to be used and canceled together. So if you cancel them, you have to cancel four efficiently and combine it with three at just the appropriate time. Now, you generally could follow up with five because five gives increased basic damage to 80 by 80%, but it doesn't do as much damage with defensive CTPs. So, if you decide to build Carnage completely defensive, it could work in areas like Otherworld Battle, but you'll suffer in, in timeline battle, for example, because timeline battle is full of very strong Adam Warlocks. So Adam Warlocks can easily bypass the defense. Of course, you increase your chances of survival if you have Carnage's artifact, which gives a mini revive. So I'm going to make a case for the top three CTPs for him. I'll put... Number one as greed, because with greed, you can get a little bit of hybrid use out of him. You can get super guard break immunity from the ambush effect that greed gives. And you can get sufficient amount of attack to kill all of the meta, including Adam Warlocks with conquest, just so long as Adam Warlock doesn't have Colossus. So... I would recommend that CTP as number one, and I would recommend number two as refinement if you only want to primarily use him in Otherworld Battle and AC. A refinement is very good for him in those modes because he has his skills right away, and he could usually bypass the AI's attacks in the beginning very, very easily. So the third choice, I would honestly recommend a Mighty Energy. And the reason why is because Mighty Energy also gives Carnage the ability to kill Conquest Warlocks. It's arguably stronger in some cases than a mighty greed you can get away with just the mighty energy on him and still get very similar value carnage has native guard break immunity yeah, right here he also has very high decreased damage received that's why he's extremely tanky when he's combined with colossus and agent venom he has enough defense anyway but if you want to make him a glass cannon, you could easily give him something like a greed or an energy and it would greatly benefit him. So we're going into number nine, which is Hulk. Hulk is still very useful despite not having a revive. He has a third skill that increases his max HP. His HP is based on his attack so the more hp he has the more attack he has his fourth skill has the ignore targeting effect with a slightly low penetration but it's with invincibility it's 33 percent but that that percentage generally increases when you give him more attack. So at tier 3 Hulk is relatively poor. But at tier 4 with something like refinement or regen. Hulk's damage is quite good. Even with authority. So he still has very viable use. Especially he's got a damage proc there as well. And attack supports help him as well. So if you want to decide hey... 
I'm going to put Gore with Hulk and then put him with Taskmaster or Mystique. That would work just fine and he gains the benefit from increased damage received. So he is out of the meta. He's number nine. With certain CTPs, he could actually work for you in timeline battle against certain characters. He's still very useful. So what are the best CTPs to equip for him? The number one best CTP is actually a Brilliant Conquest. A Brilliant Conquest gives him extra attack because it increases his HP when the wall effect comes up. The wall effect, like he greatly benefits from the wall effect because he has such high HP and durability. On top of that, his second skill actually secretly gives super guard break immunity for three seconds because it removes all debuffs for three seconds. And with a brilliant conquest, he could gain the benefit of super guard break immunity from there too. So he becomes extremely durable against characters like Wolverine. If Wall is up, he could actually survive against Warlock as well. On top of that, he benefits from the, the increase of basic damage. He benefits from that too. So while Brilliant Conquest is a luxury CTP, and you may want to be careful about putting a CTP of Conquest on Hulk, if you do decide to put a CTP of Conquest on Hulk for fun, it does work very, very well. Unlike compared to Thanos, who needs it to be brilliant in order for it to work, you can put a mighty conquest on Hulk for it to work very well too. Whereas a mighty conquest doesn't work on somebody like Thanos. So the number two CTP I would recommend that works just as fine is Authority. Now, conquest could help you much better in the other parts of, of PvP, like Otherworld Battle and AC. But Authority could definitely help you against characters like Wolverine, and in some cases Jean Grey, on manual play in Timeline Battle. It works very well. He works very well with a mighty CTP of Authority, not even a brilliant, and the steel affects him greatly he's able to tank wolverine's fifth skill very well with this steel effect up so and the third option i would go for is a ctp of regen i would recommend it over refinement because by the time refinement's extra heal comes up hulk is already dead most of the time so, and it's mostly because Hulk actually lacks invincibility. He only has it on one skill. Whereas Authority gives him an extra invincibility proc, so that's why I recommend it. But, um, regen, it has to be brilliant. You can't put a mighty regen on him. It doesn't work like that. You can maybe put a mighty regen on Spider-Man, but I'd also recommend a brilliant regen on Spider-Man. And if you put it on Hulk, it has to be brilliant as well. Hulk does benefit from the skill cancellation. And when the skill cancels, he can go immediately into his fourth skill, which is an ignore iframe iframe. So the regen effect where it cancels the skill for a second and the residual damage comes back up. It doesn't really affect it too much unless, like, Hulk is fighting Wolverine. Like, I don't think that regen is very good, is a very good counter against Wolverine. So, you may want to proceed with caution when giving a regen brilliant on Hulk, but he can greatly benefit from uh, that CTP in Otherworld Battle and AC where his skill is utilized first. He prioritizes his fourth skill first. So it could work in that way. It's dependent on your play style, however you want to build him. So that goes and leaves us on to number 10, which is Gore. Gore, his damage is lacking a little bit these days because he's only tier three. 
And people initially recommended a defensive CTP on him when he first came out, which was good at the start. And now it no longer is because metas are too strong defensively. So he has a lot of great abilities. His second skill has a very short cooldown. It ignores targeting. It has incapacitation. And it has penetration. On top of that, even though it doesn't specify, Gore actually has native super guard break immunity on his kit. He doesn't need any CTP's effect to give super guard break immunity. You can get super guard break immunity from brilliant greeds, brilliant conquests, uh, brilliant refinements and brilliant authorities and mighties but like nobody has native super guard break in their kit so that makes gore very very valuable but he has to have his skills combined so his fourth skill does accumulate but it accumulates of of, of how much damage he's doing so it actually makes his accumulation a little bit more efficient but you have to use it because his damage is lacking otherwise. And his fifth skill is good because it increases his attack. It has a lot of hits. It could be canceled even though you have to delay it. And it has invincibility. So he has invincibility in his locker. He also has skills that could be canceled very quickly so his two could be canceled with all of the effects that come with it and they will travel his three can be slightly delayed canceled his four and his five can be slightly delayed canceled so you could rotate his skills he does have a slight problem with targeting so that's why it's also better that you combine all of his skills and he plays much better on manual and now since the meta is much different from when he first arrived. His CTP's recommendation are much different. I would actually recommend the number one CTP on him is definitely Greed. Greed gives him the attack that he needs against meta like Wolverine and Greed Warlocks. He gains a little bit of extra defense as well. He gains Reflect Negation. You only get Reflect Negation from Greed and from Conquest. Mighty and Brilliant. So, Gore greatly benefits from this. He negates the Reflect of Colossus with this CTP. So, that's why I highly recommend this CTP on him now. Over the second best choice, which is Authority. Authority still gives him the opportunity to be a counter and to survive against Jean Grey's. And that would really just be for Timeline Battle. His use with Brilliant Authority in Timeline Battle is kind of limited, but you could still get some use out of him, especially with some supports in areas like Otherworld Battle or Alliance Conquest, where the Steel Effect can come off and he will have all of his skills available to him at, at whim. So it could still be useful against Greed Warlocks. And it could still be useful against Spider-Man. And the third choice that I would recommend is... It's a bit of a tough one. But I will actually think about putting a Transcendence on him. And the reason why is because... He's one of the few that could benefit from this transcendence. It's a very easy to obtain CTP. It gives invincibility, which he needs. It gives attack, which he needs. He doesn't need guard break immunity. He gets extra pierce from a mighty transcendence. So that greatly benefits his attack. And if you don't, have any other spare CTPs of authority or spare CTPs of greed to give him, you can give him this and you don't have to waste anything crazy like a uh, conquest and he could still be very useful against certain opponents like 
probably still would be useful against greed warlocks and genes. So I would recommend that CTP on him. And that would be my top 10 list. You guys want to check out the honorable mentions? I have a whole list, a written guide on the forums that you guys could check out that goes over my team's tactics in particularly timeline battle. And I go over the same top 10 list, but I make a list that goes far beyond and I talk about the honorable mentions. So if you want to check that out, the link will be in the description below. And be sure to stay tuned for part two of my PvP guide where I go over all of the tactics for the three primary modes. Take care, everybody.